Morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us on this Friday the 13th. I know it's Friday the 13th. A lot of superstitions. I get it. I feel your pain out there, but uh, we're going to, we've got a good show for you. It is hashtag finally Friday. We've got some special guests coming up and we've got a big event this weekend. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a few moments. My co-host every Friday, Randy Ramsey of the Southwest Alternate Media Project. Good morning, Randy. How are you? Good morning, Todd. I'm like Taylor Swift. I love 13. It's my favorite number. I it just astounds me that you'd even go down the Taylor Swift road. You know, I, have I don't. Twelve year old daughter. Okay, well that that explains it all. Yeah, we bought tickets to T Swizzle in Paris in May. Wow! Did you go see the movie? The movie apparently, her movie was just released. It is the uh, live performance, mm -hmm. and from what I understand, it's so far it's been the biggest live uh, music movie ever. And it's just I think they just came out with it yesterday. I think it dropped early yesterday. It wasn't supposed to drop it, until today. And yeah, was like it dropped early yesterday. Sudden, yeah, we haven't seen it yet because we were, you know, school. Teaching yeah, school more. thing. Are y'all going this weekend? Uh, yeah, for sure. We'll be for going sure. Sunday afternoon with, you know, I'll be taking a little pack of Swifties with me to the movie theater. That was my next question. Is your daughter a proclaimed Swifty? For sure. For sure. There, I got to admit, though, there are a few songs of hers, especially some of the newer ones. Uh, that I do enjoy some of her stuff's pretty good, the newer stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd find me at her concert. You know what, Todd? As a mom of a preteen, there are a lot worse people she could be trying to emulate than Taylor hey, Swift. So I'm I get excited it. that her body's fully covered and she's yeah. not taking drugs and she's there's like no gross video. Yeah, yeah, you know? I get it. I get it. You got to give her props for that. Hey, uh, Randy, it's a Friday. You got some special yep. guests coming your way, and it's a big day tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. But everyone is watching us right now on Facebook Live and YouTube. We're here just about every morning when HCC is in session, just about uh, live at 10 a.m. But anytime, Randy, they can catch us on social media and on our cable channel. That's right. We're live on Houston Community College District Facebook page and YouTube. We're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, and HCC TV at noon, 5 and 10, Monday through Friday. No reason to miss us at all. So, big fan of that song, Ring of Fire, from Johnny Cash? I'm a big fan of celestial events. I'm super oh. excited. Well, we've got a big one tomorrow, uh, a ring of fire that will be on display in the skies. We've got Dr. Kumela Tafa joining us. He's a professor of HCC at the Physics and Astronomy. Dr. Tafa, thanks for being back on the show. Good to see you. Uh, good morning. And I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, so you've got a big event. Um, well, it's, it's going to be in the sky tomorrow, but you're going to be viewing it uh, at our Southwest College in Stafford have a big party going on. We're going to talk with you about that in about 10 minutes. Stick around. Okay, let's kick things off right now. We've got uh, another winner of the Ewan Family Endowed Chair Awards uh, for Teaching and Learning Excellence. Dr. Margarita Bracamonte is an HCC biology professor and a Ewan Family Endowed Chair's recipient. Welcome to the show, Dr. Baracamonte. To set the stage, you won this award for proposing the creation of a hub for anatomy and physiology, one students to study outside of the lab in classroom time. Let's start with a brief overlook and description of the project that got you the award. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me here on a Friday the 13th. <laughs> but I, um, well, Students in anatomy and physiology do need after class, after labs, a place where they can meet, they can teach to each other, they can be loud, right, use models, and and e even their body to, to review, because there's so much information in anatomy and physiology that it, it's different way of studying the course. So why not create a space? We're, and we have in the 3D printing uh, lab in the Idea Studio. We can print those very easily. And, and faculty in, in anatomy and physiology and students can also get involved in creating questions that we can pose and students have access to that. So a, a big resource of, of tools, activities where they can meet after lab, after lectures to, to enhance and, and go over their concepts. 
does this usually happen? I mean, are you envisioning this at the West Houston Institute or is this a model that you think can go across the district? Definitely, that's my goal. It, we can, we're going to start at uh, West Houston Institute, but it, it can easily be implemented at other campuses because all the students in anatomy and physiology, doesn't matter the campus, have the same the same uh, difficulty. And, and we, we see faculty, we chat with each other. We know that it's struggle. It, they struggle because it's not an easy course. So it can be easily expanded and I will be very happy to, to collaborate with other anatomy and physiology faculty to create other hubs in other campuses. Now, you say this is a collaborative project right now with the West Houston Institute. A lot of people have worked with you on this. Talk about that it's, uh, itself. Yeah, so that's what I love too. When, when we all come together and we all have ideas, beautiful things happen. <laughs> so yes, we have the idea studio. Their staff are excellent. They're helping us to print, to suggest. We need we need bones, print the bones to be strong so the students can use them all many years. So they're working on that. We have the Learning Commons at West Houston Institute. They're going to help us these uh, with the... Uh, using their research uh, website to post courses to, to, I'm sorry, to post the questions also to house the models that we're gonna print right there so students can borrow them in the hub that we're gonna create right there at the Learning Commons. I definitely will ask the help of faculty in anatomy and physiology to help us create questions. Also faculty in anatomy and physiology can come and borrow those printed models so they can use them in lecture because in lecture, we don't have the models. Right. In lab, yes, but not in lab, lecture. So they can come and also participate. And students, our own ACC students in anatomy and physiology will also get involved in writing questions. So or, so questions from ACC students to ACC students. So it's it's the beauty. I love that. It's, it's a collaboration, which I learned from being the Innovation Fellows in uh, this past year, collaborating with different people. Do you see students struggling in these courses? Is that, is that what inspired you to start this um, way of that they can do their work outside the classroom? Are students traditionally struggling in these courses? Yes, sir. Uh, freshman year, the anatomy and physiology students usually take that course. Any health sign, most health signs, students have to take this course in their first freshman year. Uh, it, it's it's a lot of details. It's not difficult but they need the time commitment our students are busy they're parents so it's yeah. it's busy and so yes it's a high failure rate 41 percent average across all the anatomy and physiology faculty uh it's the first of the two anatomy and physiology courses so we see in anatomy and physiology one the problem of failure and we don't want that we want our students to succeed and go on because they have a goal we we, 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 we want to help them meet their goals. Like that's what actually inspired me to give so them, help me, them. Let me rewind for a second. She said something that was very important. Are You're saying that more than 40% of the students who take this course for the first time may not pass the course. Is that what you were noticing? Yes, sir. And we wow. did, uh, yes, yes. So we did an average. We took uh, data uh, from the, the failure rates, uh, students getting Ds and Fs and this row. And yes, it's 41%. Uh, 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 an average of 41 percent usually every term fall and spring usually for these students who take this course what what is what are they looking to major in are these students that may go into health careers um what what exactly are they looking to get into it's main yes definitely it's mainly in the health field careers oh we see a high percentage of the students would like to enter their nursing program we do have radiology yeah. Uh, dental hygiene program, uh, physical therapy assistance. Uh, so, but it's it's a big. Uh, the main main student body are those that want to enter in the nursing field. So but, these are students who may want to get into the cohorts at Coleman and then maybe further add their education or go out in the field and work. And these are one of the core courses, from what I'm understanding, that they need to take prior to going on. Is that correct? That's right. So they have to pass this course, uh, the first anatomy and physiology to go on. And if they don't make it, they'll repeat it. And yeah, 
they may retake it and retake it and then they give up. So we don't want that. We definitely want to help them. But that's true. I, they have to take this course first. Now that you have the grant as the uh, one of the endowed chair recipients this year, how long do you think it will take you to be able to implement this? And I guess the next question would be, how long do you think it would take you to see how you can measure your success? Well, implementing it is, is not that difficult. We, we're already printing <laughs> printing bones because that there are a lot of free files and we need a correct anatomical model and I'm involved in that. Uh, so the idea studio is it's just ready. They're just open the door and here you go. Let's let's work together. Uh, I'm I'm already I'm I am teaching this term anatomy and physiology one, and my students are writing questions. So I'm gonna use some of those questions to to make a question bank that other students can right. use later. And and so yes, it's it's every term I'm gonna have new, new questions and selecting faculty, other faculty will involve. Um, uh, the measurement is well. We we will start once we start. We haven't opened yet the door of the hub. Yeah. But once we start, maybe in a, next uh, spring term, we can start the gating data because that definitely is a key to get more right, awards. Right. Right. KPIs. <laughs> yeah, yes. Let me ask you. I've only got about thirty seconds left, but I know you were very uh, also instrumental with OER, which are open educational resources, which more or less to our audience are, are like either low cost or free textbooks. That's very important to you as well. Definitely, because we need to make every student in the class must have the book. Some students can afford it, some can't. I use only free open educational resources That's as incredible. long as they, they are approved by the Department of Biology. And yes, That's the best thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and we use excellent books, OpenStack. Okay. And that's the most common OER book. And we have created uh, uh, a module uh, in Canvas. Any faculty that would like to use also a, a free uh, for an OER for anatomy and physiology. So uh, to me, it's, it's I, 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 I'm going to use as anything that I can use for my students free. <laughs> For them That's and good incredible. quality. Yes. Dr. Margarita Bracamonte, HCC biology professor and the UN Family Endowed Chairs recipient. Thank you for being here this morning. We uh, know student success is very important to you, and I uh, wish you the best uh, best uh, success in, in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. As we mentioned, this weekend, a, a solar eclipse is happening, folks. And Randy Ramsey has got all the information. Randy, take it away. That's right. We're moving on and welcoming Dr. Kumala Taffa, professor of HCC's doctor. I'm sorry, he worked hard for that. Got to throw that in there. Dr. Taffa is a professor of HCC's physics and astronomy program. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for being here. I am super excited. But before we get into all the details about the super cool, super cool eclipse, Tell me about the astronomy program, because I will bet you we have folks who don't know we have one. Thank you, uh, Randy. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm glad to be on the show today again. Uh, astronomy program, yes, uh, uh, it has been there for quite some time for us here at HCC. We have um, uh, two major courses, solar astronomy and uh, introduction to stars and galaxies. And our courses are very popular among uh, regular students as well as uh, dual credit students around our our, our community. So these courses uh, introduce students to, again, as I said, to the solar system as well as to the stars and galaxies in theoretical uh, setup as well as uh, experiment. So they have a lab requirement that they can they can fulfill for their graduation is with us a science course. And also they can take our uh, astronomy uh, core courses uh, to fulfill their uh, science courses. I am so excited. I, I remain always amazed by the depth and breadth of classes that we offer. And every time I'm out in the community, people go, oh, I didn't know HCC had that. I feel like I answer that a lot. So now let's move on to the super exciting thing because there are different types of eclipses. So what type is happening this weekend and what are the conditions that we need need for it to occur? Okay, thank you. That's a great question again. And um, 
Yes, tomorrow, Saturday, for the 14th, we will have uh, one of our probably something we cannot we cannot see from our our place here every day. Maybe not every year. Okay. So this is the first time we see this right from, from our, our perspective. So that is a solar eclipse. So you basically you have two types of eclipses, the solar and lunar. Okay, what does that mean? I have a model here, so let me uh, kind of illustrate that using my model. So here you have the sun. That is, of course, our planet Earth. And that's the moon. So the alignment of these three celestial objects is what creates so, uh, eclipses. And now, as you all know, the Earth is going around the sun and the moon is going around the Earth. Okay, so what will happen when the moon is between the sun and the earth? That's what will happen tomorrow. That is our solar eclipse. And at another time, as the earth rotates around the sun, again, the moon also rotates. So around the, the, the earth, what will happen now? The earth is between the moon and the sun. That is what we call lunar eclipse. We see that in the night, only in the night. And tomorrow's is a ring of fire because when the moon is between the earth and the sun, all we'll see is the ring of the sun, right? Yes. So why? So this is the, our solar eclipse. There are two types of solar eclipses. One is total eclipse and the other one is what we are going to see tomorrow the ring of fire or annular eclipse. Why do we see that? Because actually the moon is not rotating around us at fixed distance. It, it moves on an egg type of path. Sometimes get closer to us, sometimes get a little further out from us. Right now, it's a little further out. That is why it cannot completely cover the sun. So it will cover it uh, in such a way that the whole disk is not fully covered, and then you'll see a ring of fire when you look at the sun from our perspective. At another okay, time, so yes. I was going to say, ask how often does that happen? Very good. So, um, some sort of eclipse will happen um, in, at, a, at a rate of two to three per year, but this event is not that. The, the event, it could be either annular or total eclipse. Okay, so on average, you will have about say two to three per year. That does not mean that we are going to see it here. It will happen somewhere on the planet. Okay, yeah. so we are so lucky this time. So that's why, why I'm excited about it. We are so lucky here. We are here. We can see it. But there is a little kite to that again for Houston, for Houstonians. We do not really see that ring of fire from here because we are not on the exact path of the solar this uh, lunar annular eclipse. So if we are at San Antonio to the west or a little further down to Copper Christi, we could have seen exactly the ring you were saying, the ring of fire. Here we'll see it, but it is like um, a diamond on your ring, kind of broaden diamond on your ring that's what we are going to see tomorrow here so close but not close. not as not as sexy as the one in san antonio but you know what usually we have way more exciting stuff here so it's <laughs> tomorrow but there's a party yes tell me about that because you know okay. i love a party okay um i'll talk about the party but let, let me share with, with you also about um, another solar as I said, we are really fortunate this time around. And around April 8th, we mm -hmm. will also witness total solar eclipse. Right. We and I've been hearing that you need to go out into the hill country for that in April. In April, yes, yes you have to go to, if you go to San Antonio, you will see it again. Yeah. San Antonio is kind Very of, blessed the two, yeah, the two are cross-creasing each other. Two paths are cross-creasing each other on San Antonio. So that's really fascinating. I'm looking forward to that as well. So that is where you see, okay, all of a sudden, okay, 
at 1.30 in the afternoon, it looks like as if it is 1.30 midnight, past midnight, all of a sudden. And you can see the environment of the sun. That is what excites the most all scientists around the world. Now coming to the party. So uh, yes, we will host uh, a view party here at Stafford campus. Okay, and um, we have prepared early years. Folks, uh, this is really fascinating and um, interesting event, so since the event to watch. You can watch it. If you can come down here, we can talk about it. You can watch it with us. If you are at home, you can watch it, but don't look at the sun directly. It will damage your eyes. So you have to have proper gear like this one here. We have uh, plenty for our um, watch uh, uh, party cameras here. So we will share this with them so they can view the solar eclipse safely using this gear. And what time does it start? Uh, we will start at 11 with a small uh, talk about the science of eclipses like we did now. And then we go out and start watching the eclipse happening from 11.30 to around 12.30. And that's at the Stafford camp campus, right? Yes, that's at the Stafford campus on Cash Road. I am super excited. And I, you know, I, I mean, I know that you're excited, but it is so great that we get to have two, you know, so big celestial events this year. And I'm so glad that we have you to guide us through them. Thank you so much, and I'm really happy and uh, uh, looking forward to see people uh, to come out here and watch it with us. Or don't miss this. This is a lifetime experience, folks. Watch it from where you are, or come down here, watch it with us. We'll talk about it. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Tafa, Professor of Physics and Astronomy. We'll have all that info in our post after the show. Todd, are you going to be out there not staring directly at the sun without proper gear? You know where I'm going to be tomorrow to watch the solar eclipse? I'm going to be at the Renaissance Festival. Tell me that's not going to be fun. I'm I'm a little worried for you. It does <laughs> seem fun. I, my my daughter's school fair is tomorrow, so we will be at the school fair. Hopefully, There's not nothing like watching like pagans dance around a full eclipse. Nothing like not that. full, Doctor Doctor Tom. Well, yeah, well, full yeah. Solar in April to them, it's full. Yeah, you know, it's full Nothing enough. Full. It's close enough. Yeah. Look, it's not really the medieval times either. So you know, exactly, it, it's fine. Yeah, I do yeah. love a Renaissance festival. Good for you. I'll be out there in two weeks. Two weeks. You notice each week it gets. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Each week it gets more and more expensive. Right, but it's also less and less hot, which is what's important to me. Yeah, tomorrow I, should be a good day. So we're looking. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, so. as as we've established, Randy and Hot. Yeah, okay. didn't work out. A uh, couple of announcements to get through. We'll get through a few of these. Um, West Loop Art Exhibition uh, ex ex exhibition is going on right now. It's it's children caught in the crossfire, and it's an uh, exhibition featuring the work of Chloe Helen Calthorpe and Dylan Stewart. It runs October twenty third through December fourth. It's at the West Loop Gallery. It is free. There's an artist reception Thursday, October twenty sixth. You can attend at six p.m. We'll have some information in our post after the show and Inventathon partnership with NASA this year. That's coming up very soon. Yeah, it's the NASA and MIT Challenge. HCC's Inventathon in collaboration with NASA invites students to join a hackathon experience to explore space technology and Earth sustainability. Students can form teams or go solo, delve into coding, robotics, or make something the world has never seen. Let your imagination run wild. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, October 29th, virtual and at the West Loop campus. So check the post after the show. And I, for the sake of time, I want to mention that we're on our annual giving campaign here at HCC. The HCC Foundation has launched its fundraising I Love HCC campaign, inspiring HCC employees to make a personal donation in support of HCC students. Payroll deduction is the easiest way to set up your recurring gift, and some giveaway drawings will be held later, uh, later on. Check our post after the show for more information. Very important to do that. And Randy, it's if you haven't registered, I think Monday is the time, the last time you can register for an eight-week course. Yeah, for the fall. And then we're rolling on into spring registration, into spring. which starts yep. very soon. 
So, you know, as always, we have five different ways to learn. Check our post after the show. Lots and lots. As I said before, the depth and breadth of courses we offer is unbelievable. It is hccs.edu slash apply. Next week, Monday, Mental Health Monday, Sarah Gish of Ignite Your Life will be here speaking Woo-hoo. her monthly, yeah, you know her, monthly words of Sarah. wisdom. And Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. We welcome Musafer, the fine dining galleria restaurant offering 29 regions of India and its spice routes. Yeah. That should be pretty cool as well. So. Yeah. You got a big weekend ahead of you, so you got a lot on your ta- a lot on your list this weekend. I know lots on the list this week. Taylor the Swift Eclipse, Sunday, tomorrow's Swift, fair. the school fair. Yeah, my son's got scouts. It's it's a busy weekend as always over here. Good Just for you. Lot drive around on. in circles in Houston. That's what I do. Yeah, well, my my uh, my Cougars won last night, which was an incredible game. Tomorrow we've got the uh, Renaissance Festival, and then Sunday, hey baby, Texans are back. And they're actually fun to watch this year, which is unusual compared to the last what, five or six years. Very unusual. Very but unusual. Should be a good series. Looking forward yeah. to it. Should be. Randy, thanks for being here. We'll see you next week, right? Yep, absolutely. All right. And then I'm headed to NOLA. That's right. Yeah, fun in mm-hmm. NOLA, man. I'll give mm-hmm. you some good places to go eat. I'll tell you. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll have coffee. We'll talk. No big whoop. We'll- we'll- All right. Have a good weekend, folks. Stay safe. Enjoy the weekend. We'll see you Monday morning live on Up to the Minute.